The Southern Railway prided itself as a high-density commuter hub, serving South East England and London. Much of the railway was powered by electric traction. It was cheap and economical and was the precursor to modern-day traction today. As the world teetered on the brink of World War II, and as the country geared up for war, the Southern Railway realised that while it was advanced in commuter and passenger innovations, it severely lacked innovation in freight, something that the railway simply couldn't afford to lack in, especially as lives would quite literally depend on their services. The freight team of locomotives was built by Richard Mounsell to old Victorian principles, and even though they were barely a year old, because of the way that they were built, they were considered antiquated by modern day standards. This was no fault of Richard's, having been in the industry since 1891. He was accomplished and well-respected locomotive engineer and designer, but the Southern Railway knew they needed new blood. And upon Richard's retirement, they hired young engineer and designer Oliver Bullied. Bullied saw the Southern's problems, and he couldn't afford, but he couldn't afford to be as frivolous as the LNER with streamlining or adding extra features. He needed something with an impressive traction effort, high availability, but low cost and minimal materials. From the mind of Bullied and from the drawing board of the Southern, the Q1 was born. Gone was the Art Deco streamlining of the 1920s, the bright colours and the extravagance. In its place is minimalism and economy under the new austerity regime created by the government. The engine was built specifically for functionality rather than looks, and its unique shape allowed it to be driven through a coach washer, negating the need for standard cleaners. The main reason for its unusual shape was mostly down to the materials used in its creation. The lagging insulation that wrapped around the boiler and pipes was replaced with Ida glass, a fiberglass material that was cheap and in good supply. It wasn't normally used on steam engines, as Ida glass cannot carry weight, so a separate casing was needed and new boiler rings were adapted to take the extra weight. The firebox would be made from copper rather than steel, and the wheels would be smaller. The boiler was the largest that could fit the frame, and it lacked running boards in an attempt to cut any excess weight. For the driver and the fireman, the Q1 was a delight to run. Instead of the fireman having to climb aboard the tender, the Q1 had the unusual option of allowing the water tanks to be filled from the footplate. The engine was basic and easy to run, and the cab was enclosed, giving protection to the crew, both from the elements and enemy fire, and by shielding the light from the fire, it reduced the chances of the engine being seen by the enemy. From the moment the Q1 left the works, it never looked back. It thrived on the goods work and was the power behind linking England to the South Coast and Europe beyond. It ferried all sorts of goods, from food to munitions. They were only supposed to last until the end of the war, but because of their monumental efforts, they were well in service up until the end of steam. After the grouping, British Rail classed the engines as Power 5F, the only 060 engine to ever achieve this power class. They were a love it or hate it engine. Some loved them, others despised them calling them Charlies, Biscuit Tins, or even Frankensteins. After the war and later in its life, the Q1 began to show its age. The minimal thin materials would cause ash and smoke to blow out of the smoke box sides, so much so that drivers would be told to shut off regulators when passing through stations. The only Q1 to survive today is the original C1, this is the first Q1 to roll off Brighton Works. After the war, it worked all over the south of England and even had the experience to take the odd passenger train or two. After the end of steam, 
the Seaman was preserved for the nation and found a new home on the Bluebell Railway. The engine was given a much needed makeover. Surprisingly, despite being made over half a century earlier, the engine was in great condition. It was given to some young apprentices as a challenge to get the old girl up and running. They excelled, getting the engine on the line within six months. It ran very well for a couple of years before being sent back to the works for a major overhaul. The C1 would remain on the Bluebell while the National Railway Museum and the Bluebell sorted out the details and renewed the agreement, but in 1987 the engine was taken into the shed and didn't emerge for five years. When it did, it sported repaired wheel sets, a newly overhauled boiler and tender, and its, old, and its original southern wartime black with sunshine, sunshine yellow southern lettering. It was polished and cleaned and ready for the line. The engine worked diligently through the next 10 years and sported a variety of different numbers that it would have had throughout its life. But like everything, all things must come to an end. Its boiler ticket was expiring and the Bluebell was struggling with storage space and its workshop was full with other projects. In 2004, the National Railway Museum asked if they could house the engine after the Bluebell's annual rail fest of that year. The museum was keen to get the engine on display. While it had engines that survived and were much older than World War II, it lacked an engine that was built during the wartime specifically for the war effort. It also lacked an engine of its size with the unusual wheel arrangement. The Bluebell agreed, and in July 2004, the C1 was taken to York and retired. The museum still houses the C1 today, and is one of the many engines in the Great Hall, aptly being placed near to the ambulance train exhibition. There are talks down the line to resurrect the C1 and get the old girl back working, in good working order once again, and it is hoped that with the correct funding and the right time, the C1 will once again grace the rails. But for now, the great engine has done her work, and she deserves a rest. Researching the Q1 was a blessing, and I have to thank Aiden Productions for making the suggestion to look into her. If you have any ideas what I can research next, please, please let me know in the comments. It might not be straight away, but I will feature it. Until then, though, I'll see you all next time.